from every three people watching this, only one of you will reach the end of this video. And I am talking to you. If you are serious about mastering SolarWorks, then listen to every word I'm telling you in this video from second zero to the last second. When you need to go shopping and you need milk, coffee or whatever, and you want to take the car to go to your supermarket, you don't think about, I have to take the car out, then I have to open the door, start, put it into gear, then press on the gas, steer, park in front of the supermarket, hit the brake. You just think about your objective, which is the items you are going to buy. The car is a step in between that takes a fraction of a second in your head because it's not a challenge. That's what I am going to do for you with SolarWorks. When you decide you're going to model something, I don't want you to think about, I have to use this feature, then I have to draw this, then I have to do that. I want you to learn SolarWorks the way I teach it to my students. That is, I will use SolarWorks to create this model, then I will make this, then I combine them together, then they work like that. Kind of like going to shopping without thinking about how to drive. This is the true meaning of mastery. And yes, even as a true beginner who has not touched SolarWorks ever before or any other CAD package for the sake of the argument, you can get there if you do what I tell you to do okay so this video is a start it is not the whole journey because the journey takes longer you cannot become a true driver after going to the class for the first time you need practice but true learning true practice and a good support that's what you need and this is only a preview of what you can get right now with me on YouTube at the end I'm going to tell you about my course to take you from where we stop on YouTube to the rest of your journey and if you are are dead serious about mastering SOLIDWORKS the way I just described it, sit back, don't relax, focus, put your phone away because by the end of tonight, if you look at your screen time on your phone, you have spent more than a couple of hours of checking Instagram, WhatsApp, this and that. No judging, but you haven't learned much from that. I am telling you invest about one hour of your time on this video, focus on every second of it. By tonight, you will go to bed with a skill set that you cannot find any anywhere else. Okay, good. Let's begin. I am working with SOLIDWORKS 2023, but it is still applicable to SOLIDWORKS 2012 and above. SOLIDWORKS has reached an equilibrium that is almost perfect and doesn't need much changing. Every couple of years, they add a few features to the new versions, but 99% of what I am teaching you today is applicable to the older versions and most probably to the future versions, 24, 25, 20 and so on. If I'm teaching you something that is not available in previous versions, I will let you know. Okay, right now we are at an absolute beginner level. So this is a component that as a beginner, you can learn within a couple of seconds. We're not going to do that now. And this is a model that is considered advanced and you cannot do it today. Even if I walked you through the steps, by the time I'm finished and I ask you to do it again, you cannot. So know the difference. There are so many things in between that can be done with solid works like sheet metal this one a complex assembly complement of grab cat i don't know something like this these are advanced we are not going to get there today but what we are going to do today this is the moment you open solidworks for the very first time some of you might see this window for the first time and some of you might see a window closer to this with an exception of the recent documents if this is the first time you're opening it because you don't have any recent documents. The most important thing is you see these three items, part, assembly, and drawing. The three main columns that you build your SOLIDWORKS journey on. You create single components here, assemble them here. You create technical 2D drawings over here, define the tolerances and dimensions, surface finishes, and so on and so forth here. So now Naturally, we start on part. Okay, so many icons, so many things to click. I know when I start a new software for the first time, as, which is as deep as SOLIDWORKS, let's say something that I don't work with, there will be a lot of menus, tools, tabs, and icons that I don't know. And it's kind of overwhelming, okay? Before I tell you what to focus on, I am going to tell you what not to 
focus on. Eventually, you'll learn all these tools and they become second nature to you. But right now, we have a menu on the top, which you can pin or unpin here. That's very standard. I'm sure you know a lot of it. Save, print, open, new, home, settings. We will cover these later. And then we have our tabs here. A tab is a toolbox. Imagine if you are going to paint a wall, you need a different set of tools. You need paint, you need brush, you need this. Like a plumber has a different toolbox. He has a wrench, he has ceiling tapes. So these tabs over here are different toolboxes for different purposes, okay? We want to right click here, go to tabs, find their name, evaluate. We don't need to work with it, sheet metal. We didn't need to see it. Surfaces, we don't need to see it. And if you have more than these open, go ahead, close them. It is not for you yet. All you need is the sketch tab and the features tab. The sketch tab provides you with the 2D tools to draw a 2D sketch and feature tab provides you with a bunch of tools to convert those 2D sketches into 3D components. Because every 3D component starts with a 2D sketch and every 2D sketch has to be on a plane. It's like I give you a pen and ask you to draw me something. You cannot start drawing midair. You need a paper. So that paper is our 2D plane. We have three default 2D planes. We have the front plane, we have the top plane and we have the right plane. Highlighting them all would give you this. This is what you have and this is what you can start working on. You can choose one of these three, click on it and go to the sketch tab where you have your 2D sketching tools and click on sketch to activate the sketch mode or you could just do it faster, click on it and click this icon which is the same icon as this one and activate the sketch mode. By doing this, the front plane will rotate and face you perpendicularly. You will look normal at it. You are looking perpendicularly at the plane you just activated the sketch on. And if by mistake you rotate your plane, make sure to bring it back to where it was and look at it perpendicularly before you start drawing on it. Because if you want to draw a perfect circle, it doesn't look like a perfect circle. It looks like an oval. Okay. This is not an oval. It's a perfect circle, but you're looking at it wrong and you need to look at it perfectly. How to do this is just by pressing the space bar and clicking on this icon normal too. So again, if we are not facing our plane perpendicularly, so we press the space bar and we click on this icon. This is the fastest way of doing this. So far so good. If you press the space bar and you see this cube, which happens a lot when you install your SOLIDWORKS for the first time and you have learned to select that side to look at it, I recommend you to click here and deactivate it because look how slow it is to just select the plane you want to select for the animation to run. We don't want to see this all the time. We want to work faster. So we deactivate this and we work like this. I will cover this. Press the space bar, normal too. We always make sure we are looking at our sketch perpendicularly. That's that. Now we want to continue drawing. This draws a circle. This draws a rectangle. This draws an arc, oval. You try these and you don't worry about making a mistake. Don't be like your grandparents. They're afraid they would just somehow mess with the PC and it's irreversible. Try all the tools. See how they work. Okay, so now that we are looking at our plane perpendicularly and we are in our sketch tab with an activated sketching mode, I want to tell you that inside each tab, each toolbox, there are segments, as you can see, separated by small gray line over here. So the more you move towards the right, the more advanced your tools become. So you don't start learning about all of these and you can keep adding tools to your toolbox. There are tons of hidden tools for in SOLIDWORKS available that you can drag and drop into your toolbox depending on the type of work you do. But these are the basics and we want to learn from left to right. Some of these tools only make sense when you have already used previous tools. For example, you cannot use a wrench before you have put a bolt on a nut to turn, right? It's useless. So you cannot mirror anything before you have drawn something. We want to start with the drawing tools and skip a smart dimension. We will go back to it. We have 12 tools in inside the drawing tools and each one of them, almost each one of them has an arrow next to it that gives you alternate versions of that tool. We don't want to get overwhelmed. We'll start with the simplest one, which is line. First point, second point and third point, fourth point and 
you can put unlimited points and draw whatever you want until you close the loop or press escape on your keyboard to get rid of this tool and deactivate it, okay? This is closed, now I can keep drawing another loop here, but the tool is still activated. And if you pay attention to my mouse cursor, you see a pencil, which shows that the sketching mode is activated and you see a line next to it. It means the line tool is still selected. If you wanna get rid of it, you have to press escape, which brings me to the next topic. I wanna open a side quote and talk about the composition of your hands at all times when working with SOLIDWORKS. Your right hand is on the mouse at all times and your left hand is covering this corner of the keyboard like this. This is how you put your hand on the keyboard when working with SOLIDWORKS. Your middle finger is on SCAPE because SCAPE is one of the most used keys in SOLIDWORKS. It gets you out of activated tools and tabs and menus. So this is always here. Your thumb is on the spacebar because spacebar is also used a lot and I will tell you why in the future couple of minutes. Also, we need control a lot of time. Third most used key is control. So your thumb has to switch between these two. Now, next tool, back to the the drawing is circle, scape, rectangle, a slot, scape, hexagon, okay, an oval like this, spline like this. You could start writing a text. We will cover that. It's not necessary right now. How about if you wanna make a pentagon? What tool should we use? Hexagon, then we will turn it into five sides. Then we have a pentagon, but wait, what was that? Why is it not here? Where, where did that menu come from? Pay attention to the next bit I'm going to teach you. So far, I have only talked about the toolboxes up here, the tabs, but there are a bunch of smaller toolboxes here, here. These are also tabs, but they are called managers. They help you manage the tools you pick from your toolbox. So on default, we are on the feature manager, which holds the design tree. The design tree is this. When you keep adding features and tools and models into your canvas, they get listed here in a chronological way, that is in order. And if you move them up and down the tree, it changes their relationship to another, okay? So this all happens, including the first three default planes, inside the feature manager but as soon as you pick a tool whether it's on the sketch tab or the features tab solidworks automatically switches from feature manager to property manager by the way the other managers are not there you are blind to them they don't exist to you you only have feature manager and property manager you don't see the rest so look if i pick a tool Look what happened. We just jumped to property manager and we can now customize that tool. We want it to have four sides. Four sides is just a rectangle or seven sides like this. Or we want to change more about this. You can learn these as we go on. You don't need to learn this right now. It would be a burden to carry it with you. This is one of those things that you need to learn to walk first, then run, okay? I'm not gonna teach you everything before we go to the next tool. Just know that if you pick a tool, you have an opportunity to customize it depending on the tool you pick. Some of the tools don't give you any, like spline doesn't give you any customization, but rectangle does, okay? So that's that. Now, now that we have drawn a bunch of 2D sketches, some of these tools become more relevant to us. For example, we could trim some of them, we could offset them, we could mirror them, we could pattern them, we could move them, and we could use this, 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 and that. But that would be getting ahead of ourselves. I want you to take a step back and move to the tool before it called Smart Dimension. Smart Dimension in SOLIDWORKS is probably one of the most used tools ever. You always need a SOLIDWORKS is an engineering cat, so you are always working with dimensions accurately. And Smart Dimension is here to do that for you. It has an arrow underneath it that gives you certain type of dimensioning, only vertical dimensioning or only horizontal or from the coordinate or this and that. But if you click on the main icon, it can decide on its own which tool, which type 
of dimensioning you would need. It is only in rare cases that you need to go and pick these accurate ones. In the beginning, you only click on it. Now, there are so many ways I could add dimensions to my drawings. If I select a circle, it automatically turns into the diameter mode. And now I can enter a value after I have drawn my circle. It's at 33, I wanna make it 50, so I click 50 and press OK. If I select a line, it gives me the distance. If I select one point and then another point, it would give me, again, the distance. But if I move my mouse up, it gives me the horizontal distance. If I move my mouse left, it gives me the vertical. If I go inclined, it gives me the shortest distance between them. And depending on where I click on the screen, I will finalize that dimension. So let's just turn it vertical, click OK, add the value 80, done. If I select two lines, like first, look again, dimension, and the second line, my left hand is here, I'm not touching anything on the keyboard. It turns into the angle. I can set the angle between these two. If I select three points, again, turns into the angle, okay? If my sketch turns red from blue, it means invalid solution font. This is an overdefined state. These two angles cannot coexist. It does not make sense. These two cannot be at 125 next to each other and these two at 125. So it turns red, we get an error. So we select this dimension and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. The sketch goes back to blue, which means it is still underdefined. Underdefined state is a state that you can change your sketch almost freely almost if you have defined a value like this 80 regardless of what you do that 80 would not change your sketch is flexible but to a degree this one for example does not have any sketch relation or dimension assigned to it so i can change it almost freely and the way i want but over here we have 176.24 and that cannot change anymore unless I double click on the value and then type 180 then I can change it okay so when you use smart dimension you change the variables in a controlled way when you don't assign smart dimension your changes apply to your sketch in an uncontrolled way and this is a state where things go wrong the most for beginners so you want to prevent being in the underdefined state and ideally move toward having a fully defined state not overdefined you don't want to go in the red because that does not make sense you want to go black black is the color for a fully defined sketch allow me to show you i'm going to delete everything and the way i'm going to do it click here and drag it until I open a box selection. It is in green and if I select it from this corner to this corner it is in blue because they have different purposes. The blue box selection works in a different way and the green box selection works in a different way. If I left click here and hold on to my left mouse click moving to the top right corner gives me blue, bottom right gives me blue, bottom left gives me green, top left gives me green. So left is green, right is blue. What's the difference? Look at this. I am going to click here and create a blue selection to this point. Any sketch that is 100% inside the blue box is going to be selected. And any sketch that is not 100% inside it, like the corner of that sketch on the bottom right corner is not going to be selected, okay? Look at this. When I let go of the box selection, you will see what gets highlighted and what doesn't. Pay attention. So these entities, AKA lines, corners, surfaces, edges, entities are highlighted in light blue because they were 100% inside the blue box selection. And this corner, this corner, this line, this line, and the rest are not highlighted because they were not fully inside. Now, if I do it reverse and go green, look what happens. Anything that is even partially inside the green box selection gets selected. You will understand the importance of these two box selections as we go on further into depth of SOLIDWORKS in our journey. So allow me to just select everything and press delete on the keyboard and get rid of everything. Now, the sketching mode is still active. You can see it exit as sketch, but I don't see my plane anymore because I have not clicked on it. It's not selected. You don't need to see it, okay? If you want to see your plane at all times, just 
click on it and click on this eye icon which is called show then it's always there for your attention so you could see if it's not perpendicular to you or not now at this point i want to tell you how i rotate my plane or my components because it's important don't forget this in solidworks there are always more than one way to do almost anything there are five ways to create a cylinder 10 ways to rotate your component there are so many ways to do this the point is not to learn all of them the point is to know them and know when to use what okay that's how you become a pro that's how you go shopping without thinking about pressing on the gas or pressing on the brake in the car on the way to your shop i could rotate my component like this with an external tool i could rotate it by holding the middle mouse key and then hold it and rotate my mouse i could rotate it with the arrow keys on the keyboard i could rotate them at 90 degrees by holding shift on the keyboard and pressing the arrow keys i could rotate them by doing this i could rotate them by doing that doesn't matter what you need to learn is first hold the middle mouse wheel like this and then rotate your mouse that's the first way i want you to learn to rotate your components middle mouse wheel hold it drag your mouse around if you can rotate a plane like this you can rotate a 3d object like this as well again we want to look at our plane perpendicularly how do we do that tell me press on the space bar with your thumb and then press normal to done okay good let's just make it more interesting we want to create our first 3d object we have selected the rectangular tool we are going to place the first point here which is not good which is not my recommendation but i'm doing this on purpose press it here and then move our mouse i'm not holding the mouse key okay look at this if it would change yeah the mouse is free you don't need to hold any buttons on it until you're ready then you click it good you could press escape and then pick the smart dimension or if you want to work faster you could directly press smart dimension you could jump between the tools without pressing escape this is the faster way of doing it now look at this two of our entities lines points edges surfaces anything entities are in black two of them are in blue as the result generally we are still in the blue state because as long as you have one blue entity the whole sketch is in the under defined state as you can see down here under defined why is this point black because this corner of the rectangle was placed on the coordinate system which is a fixed entity its coordinates are zero 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 xyz all three zero so that point has only one solution in the 3d space that we are looking at and working on but this corner does not have a fixed x and y at the moment the z is fixed on the plane on the front plane whatever i do i cannot move this point outside of the front plane because we are drawing whatever we are drawing on one 2d plane don't forget this as soon as i define this point by picking a smart dimension and adding a distance here I will fix it and it will go black. Right now, I just turned this line into black as well. Why? Because this distance is 90. I cannot drag this line to the right or left anymore, but this one can still move up and down. We still have one degree of freedom over here and we can remove that by adding one more dimension here. Let's just go 60. Now, everything is in black. You can see down here fully defined and nothing can be dragged. Nothing can be changed except three through a controlled way that is double clicking on your dimension and changing it here that's the only way you can change your drawing now i'm not a fan of looking at my plane at all times i just wanted to teach you so i'm going to right click here and hide the plane okay now for the first time we move to the features tab where the tools to turn your 2d sketch into a 3d model exist you see many tools most of them are grayed out because not many tools can be applied on a 2d sketch some of them can extruded boss revolved boss and swept boss let's just start from the first one and click on it look now we are not looking at it perpendicularly and we don't have to because we are looking at a 3d object at this point and we see our preview so this 2d sketch is being extruded out for the distance of 10 look it is still the property manager of the extruded bus tool so we could change this number to 45 and it comes further out we can still rotate it manually this is our sketch this is the plane the sketch is on and this is the preview if we want to extrude it to the other side we could flip the direction here that's what this icon is this always flips the direction it changes the value and there are so many points here but in order to show you what we are working on i'm going to collapse 
all the tools here. Look, this is the property manager of the tool. It has a from section, direction one, direction two, thin features, selected contours. We are working on default as beginners in direction one. That's it. Or maybe direction two, if you want to activate it, you could extrude it on the flip side for a different value. Look. Now we are extruding at 110 to the back, 45 to the front. Ignore the units. You could be on IPS, doesn't matter. I will cover how to change your units also in this video. Now, if I click OK, now I have added my first feature, which is extruded bus called bus extrude one into the design tree. Now, this is the first feature on the tree. Let's just look at our cube like this. Now, after adding and creating your very first 3D object, many other tools inside the feature tab will become available. Now you can round the edges because there are edges to be rounded, or you could chamfer them, or you could create multiple boxes, or you could shell this and make it empty. I'm not going to teach you shell, but look, you could do this. When to use what tool is a knowledge that I teach you in a controlled way. I don't want to just dump all these tools on you. Say this does this, this does this, this does this, this does that. And you go figure out what to use. You will never learn like this and you should not. We are going to stick to this tool because this tool is so capable and probably one of the most basic tools that you see in all features. But there are so many things that has happened in this one step that we have done and we are going to go back and review them. OK, what happened to our sketch? Did we just lose our sketch? If I want to go change the dimensions of this box, which was 100 by 40 some or 60. But hey, it wasn't. I, I made a mistake. It should have been 110 by 60. How can I change this? Look, there is an arrow next to the feature we just used. And if I click on it, sketch one is here. We need to learn how to edit what we have done before we move on. I click on that one left click or even a right click would give you that. And this pop up on the top, not the menu here. This is what we need. Look, edit sketch. Boom. Now I can look at my sketch. Ah, double click 110. OK. And how do I click OK anymore? If I click OK here, I don't see the 3D view. It is because we have entered the active sketching mode. And to get out of it, we could either click here, click here, click here, control B or control Q or a dozen of other ways to do this. What I recommend you to learn is to click here for now. Later on, I will give you shortcuts to do it faster, but you need to learn what that is. That right there is called rebuild. Rebuild, because we have built this before, and when we edit it, enter the sketching mode, we rebuild it after we are done. So you have to rebuild it to go back and see the updated version. Now, if you wanna hide this, hide it. If you don't wanna do it, don't do it. OK, we just adjusted our sketch, but I realized the extrusion number was also wrong. So I need to edit the value of the extrusion. So this time, instead of clicking on the sketch, I click on the feature and click not edit sketch, because if I click edit sketch, I still go and edit this. I click on edit feature. Ah, 45. It should have been 60. Boom. OK, this is our cube and it is done. And we are going to use a bunch of other tools. You want to round the edges, you select fill it, apply the radius, and we ignore everything else that we see here. Fillet expert, what type, what this. You just learn to select the edges like this, apply the radius and click OK. OK, now we just round it a bunch of edges like this. If you want to create a hole inside this, you can. If you want to make this hollow, you can. If you want to create a draft on this, you can. But please don't expect me to cover all of this because you will not learn anything. If you want to know how to create a hole, I will teach you, but not like this. Oh, right. I want to get rid of the fillet, which is this feature that just rounded my edges and it is added to the design tree. So I'm going to click on it and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Before we continue, let me show you something. The three default planes we have, let, let me just make them shown like this. Look at that. The front plane is sitting on one side of the cube. The right plane is sitting on the other side and the top plane on the other. Okay. This 
is a crucial moment for you. This is what wastes your time 100% of the time as beginners guaranteed. So if you want to go away from this video learning only one thing, that would be this. When we start learning CAD as beginners, we have not understood how to communicate with the software. So I remember myself, I thought my mouse cursor was kind of like a tool that I have in my hand. And if I just go and draw a sketch, first of all, I will see an error and I didn't know what to do. I would just select a plane and boom. Oh, the error is gone. Now I want to change this corner. So how about I start drawing a circle here? Oh, good. The circle is there. Now I could just create an extrude over there, but it is not what I wanted it to be. Why? It's not like that. The mouse cursor is not a tool in your hand. The mouse cursor is selecting a point on your screen, but your monitor, the screen, this physical thing is a 2D flat surface, but behind it, you're looking at a 3D space. So when you click on a point, SolarWorks doesn't know the depth of your click. You need to define a 2D plane, a slice in that 3D space, so it knows, ah, you're clicking on this depth, on this plane. Let me just show you this is not what I'm going to teach you how I did and eventually you will learn but look if I click on this point this point okay right here look at my mouse cursor if I click on this point and assume that SOLIDWORKS knows where I'm clicking, I'm mistaken. Why? Because if I show like a bunch of random planes and click here, how does SOLIDWORKS know if I'm selecting the plane 3, plane 4, plane 5, plane 6, plane 7, or plane 8? Obviously plane 1 and 2 are not behind my mouse cursor, but 3 to 8 are. So I have to select the plane, maybe I wanted to select plane 7. And then when I draw something like a rectangle, you see it is at this depth. Okay, or later on, if I want to select plane three and draw a circle, SolidWorks knows, oh, it's at this depth. Now, if I want to create a volume between these two, don't get overwhelmed, I'm not teaching you that tool. SolidWorks knows, ah, oh, it starts from plane seven, goes through plane three, from a circle to a rectangle or vice versa, okay? So that's how SolidWorks knows what depths you're selecting at. So if you click here and assume SolidWorks knows, ah, oh, I'm selecting this corner of the box and start drawing on this, you're mistaken. You can either draw on a flat surface of a component or a 2D plane. That's that for now. So we have three planes and we have six flat sides that we can select on. If I select this side, I could go to the sketch tab, activate the sketching tool and directly draw on a flat surface. Look, I could select a circle, draw it here. If I want to fully define it, I need to assign an XY to its center like this from here to here and a diameter. Now it's fully defined. Now, if I want to go back to the features tab and this time instead of extruded bus, use the negative form, which is cut. Look, everything that has the bus, like revolved swept, has the negative form next to it. So the negative form like this and click OK, then I create a hole inside the box. I was able to do that because it has six flat surfaces. If I select this surface, which is around it, and go to the sketching tool and select the sketch, you cannot activate it because it's not flat, okay? So, which brings me to a very important point. You have three planes on default, which we will see here, and we have six sides on this cube. Three of the sides, that is this one, this one, and this one are sitting exactly on three planes. So we are wasting our resources by making them overlap. What I recommend you to do is to always place your component on the absolute center of this 3D space we are working on so you don't use your resources. Trust me, further down the line, this is the difference between getting a job done in one hour or six hours. Trust me, do this like this. Look, now, what I want to do is to select all these. By the way, I'm sh holding shift on the keyboard to select multiple things on the design tree and hide them. I want to change my sketch from the top. So I select this, edit sketch, and I want to move my sketch to the center. How do I do that? It's fully defined. I cannot move it, right? I cannot. But if I select anything here, look at an edge, a line, 
it again goes to the property manager of that selected thing. It's a vertical line. As you can see, if I select this and press delete on the keyboard, it turns into blue. Why? Because now I can make it like this. It's not vertical anymore. It has, it doesn't have to stay vertical, but let's just bring it back. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to select this corner because this corner is sitting on the origin and it's coincident with it. It's a relation. We can either fully define a sketch by assigning dimensions to it through smart dimension or adding sketch relations like this line is vertical so it's a sketch relation it's one way of fully defining your sketch there are two ways to do this by assigning dimensions or by assigning sketch relations some of the sketch relations get assigned to your sketch on default according on what you click on and how you draw it okay it's a deep topic i don't want to open it but just so you know some of these sketch relations are applied here without me doing it manually so I want to select this point again. Look at the existing relations. It has one dimension assigned to it and one coincident to the origin. Select that, press delete on the keyboard and everything goes blue. Why? I cannot change the dimensions, but I can move it because it's not anchored to any point anymore. I want to place this rectangle somewhere like this, okay? So this origin is somewhere in the middle. But how do I do that? Either through sketch relation or sketch dimension. And why you would go for either of these depends on your design intent, which opens a different chapter. Do you see why it's difficult to make you fully understand everything in one video? It takes many hours and I will do that later. I will tell you at the end of this video. But for now, I'm going to show you both ways, not tell you why to go for either, but I'm going to to show you both the first way is through dimensions so if it's 110 half of it would be what 55 so i would assign 55 and 30 from top if i do this now it's exactly on the center because we are engineers we are going to create accurate components that have to be manufactured and fit together right so this is one way of doing it but i have assigned four dimensions let me just delete these two and do it in a different way. Let's just move it a little bit. Now, there is another way. If I right click on this line and select midpoint, hold the control key down because I'm going to multiple selection and select the origin point and let go. Now I can add a sketch relation in the property manager of the two or more selected entities. What was an entity? Point, line, surface, edge, anything is an entity. And in this case, I have selected two points by holding the control key down. Now I can assign the vertical relation to them and do it again here. Select the midpoint, control, select the origin, and this time horizontal. Look, now everything is in black, it's fully defined, and I have not used two extra dimensions. I have done it through sketch relations, okay? Why? I said I would not cover this. Now we exit it by rebuilding this. Now look at the three planes again. Let's just look at them. Wow, look at that. Now we have six flat surfaces again, and two of the planes are not sitting on these flat surfaces, but one is the front plane. It is still sitting on one side of the cube. So instead of wasting three of our planes, three of our resources, we are wasting one. So we fix two of them. In order to fix the third one, we have to edit the feature, which was extruded on one side and change it from blind to mid plane. When you change it to mid plane and the value is 60, it extrudes it in a symmetrical way, 30 to this side, 30 to that side. Click OK. Now, if I select the three planes again, all three planes are cutting our component in exactly half. In this way, I have three planes to draw on and six sides. I have nine references that I can use, and that separates me from a beginner who places their very first component on three planes, wastes three of their resources, and further down the line, when they want to cut their component in half or actually uh, take a look at their cross section in half they have to go create an extra plane waste more time and create more complexity to be able to do this by the way ignore this later on place your 2d sketch on the center i told you how to do this there are many different ways to do it if i wanted to do it in a different way i could look mid plane select gone now i can move this again there are many different ways to do this if i draw a center line which i will tell you what it is later from corner to corner select its midpoint control control select and coincident again it is sitting exactly on the center or we could do it in a different way delete everything 
open the box rectangle and select center rectangle. Now we place the point on the center, draw a rectangle, pick a smart dimension, 110 by 60, and then boom. But when I deleted everything, I removed everything I had. So there is an issue here. That surface lost its name and the name of the surface changed. Even though it looks okay, we have an error here because this sketch was sitting on a point that did not exist for a moment. So the sketch relations are lost and we are getting this error. Okay, at this point, I want to leave this here and start a project and I'm gonna click on things much faster and use shortcuts. So you see what can be done. I'm not gonna explain things with the pace I just did. It took me one hour to get to this point and I just only created a cube. And if I wanted to continue like this and teach you SolidWorks the way I wanted to teach you, it would take me more than 20 hours. How do I know 20? Because I have done it. That 20 hours of output took me 18 months day in and day out to create my SolidWorks Course Pro. And from every four person watching this, only one of you will go and check this out. And I am talking to you. You who are dead serious about mastering SolidWorks without gibberish, without wasting time. I am telling you, click on the link in the description below this video, go enroll in my course. And let me tell you, it's not a free course. It's premium. And the money you pay for the course buys back you months and years of frustration and and trial and error and getting stuck. I will take your hand and move you by the pitfalls without falling into them. So you could enjoy the journey, watch the view, and you go right next to professionals in a much shorter time. If this is what you want, I cannot emphasize on my course more. Look at the public reviews that I have on this course, and I fully believe in what I have made for you. But for the three out of four of you who don't want to learn it that way, let's just continue and make this video more interesting at the end and apply a bunch of tools to this cube, okay? See what's possible. Let's see. Okay, first thing first, let's just round a bunch of corners and then create a bunch of openings here, then create a hole, then well, then let's just take this and then create a pattern, create more than one of them. No, I don't want to select this. I want to select that. Create it like this. Boom, 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 boom. Too much. And also in this direction. Boom, boom. Okay, so we have this. What else can we do? Just add one thing here. Draft it. It's too tall, I just make it shorter. Like this. I just chamfer these edges. Wow, too big. You make them smaller. Two, click OK. Now, what are we gonna do? I just uh, draw something here. This line. Rebuild it, create a swept cut, circular profile, select this, too big, five or three, click OK. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Let's just create a new plane up here and then draw a sketch, form of a hexagon or with seven edges, doesn't matter. And then we loft this towards this, not the surface. Yeah, why not the surface? But it doesn't work. Selection manager. Oh, it's twisted, but it's fine. Something like that. What else are we gonna do? How about we put some wheels on this? this further up go in not through all blind too much and then we use the same line this time create a wheel we do not merge the result we click ok we move the surface 
offset it in a different direction, flip direction, but for only two or three, it doesn't matter. Make it smaller, now select this, fill it. Five is too much, maybe three. We have a wheel here. So look, I could just click on this and build something randomly. It wouldn't get me anywhere, but this is the speed you should be working with SolidWorks. Go check my course out. And if you have any questions about SolidWorks to this point, or even more as beginners, I am going to check every single comment below this video. And if you want to reach out to me with technical questions, info at SolidWorksTutorials.net. My team and I would be happy to take over your question. By the way, once you enroll in my course, you will get access to a forum where we answer your question right there and then in the same day with screen recording and uploading your components so we fix it only for the members who would enroll in my SOLIDWORKS course pro we will provide such a service anybody else email us and we will get back to you as soon as we can or comment below this video i will also get back to you as soon as i can guys SOLIDWORKS is complicated it's a big blue ocean you cannot learn it in one hour or one week but if you want to learn it the fastest way possible you need to learn it through the right sequence you need to absorb the informations in a way that makes sense you can build your knowledge by putting your knowledge blocks one on top of each other when they make sense my course is built in a way that it just teaches you layer by layer without missing one until you get here the fastest way to master solidworks i hope you like this video and thank you for watching